Experts have discussed potential causes for the Titan sub's implosion, including a novel idea regarding how it was transported to the Titanic site hidden under its mothership. The Titan's distinctive design was created by Ocean Gate CEO Stockton Rush, who died in the catastrophe on June 2018 along with four of his paying customers. He thought that it would set a new standard for the industry. However, numerous decisions made to reduce expenses and increase the profitability of marine exploration may have potentially had devastating results, technical experts told the New York Times in a report published on Friday. The experts highlight a number of design and procedural modifications that may have doomed the Titan by contrasting it with the Alvin, a U.S. government research submersible that has successfully made more than 4,500 deep water dives since 1973. The Titan was towed across the choppy waters of the North Atlantic on its small dive platform, potentially damaging the shoddy vessel before it imploded and killed five, whereas the Alvin was designed as a sphere with an altitanium hull and was transported to the dive site on the deck of a mothership. In 2021, Ocean Gate Expedition's Titan, which is both owned and operated by them, started offering trips to the Titanic for up to $250,000 per person. In contrast to the titanium cabins used by most submersibles, it was advertised as having a roomier, cylinder-shaped cabin composed of carbon fiber. On June 2018, as it descended to the Titanic disaster, almost 12,500 feet below the surface, the Titan submarine lost contact with its support vessel. Investigators suspect the sub was crushed under the intense pressure of the deep water. Days later, its wreckage was found on the ocean floor. Along with Rush, Four other people perished. French Titanic specialist Paul Henry Nargiolet, 77. British explorer Hamish Harding, 58. And Pakistani billionaire Shahzada Darwood, 48, and his son Sulman Darwood, 19. Submersibles, like the Alvin, had a solid safety record prior to the Titan. Submersibles must be launched at sea from a mothership, which sets them apart from submarines. One of the hypotheses about the catastrophe's cause is, Titan was not kept safely on deck and was instead dragged over rough seas. On the deck of a specialist mothership, which is fitted with specialized winches and a large crane that lowers it into the water, the Alvin Research Sub is transported to diving locations. While Titan had a dedicated mothership, the Polar Prince, a smaller hired ship, hauled Titan out to sea on the disastrous dive in order to save money. NASA course saving measure by Rush, OceanGate chose the Polar Prince, a decommissioned Canadian Coast Guard icebreaker, which was smaller and older than the ships it had previously used. The Titan was placed on the launch platform that was used to submerge and retrieve the submarine and the ship hauled it across hundreds of miles of open water using a tow rope. A business official responded to the Times when asked if towing Titan put it at danger of harm by saying, Ocean Gate is unable to provide any additional information at this time. 
The same Polar Prince mothership that towed the sub roughly for 35 miles from St. John's, Newfoundland, to the Titanic site was used for Oni Weissman's Ocean Gate journey in May. Weissman told the Times, I thought the sub and platform were being tossed around pretty roughly. The dive was eventually cancelled, and Weissman never got to descend in the Titan, despite waiting a week on board the Polar Prince for the weather to clear. Weissman described a terrifying account of a near disaster for the sub and platform amid rough waves in a post for Travel Weekly. We noticed that the front of the platform and the sub were submerged near the end of the cable connecting the stern of the ship to the platform, he wrote. Although the cause of the incident remained unclear, crew members theorized that a fishing buoy that had been sighted nearby may have tangled with the platform's rope and dragged it down, filling air tanks with water. Rush had to send divers out to remove water from the station's bouncing tanks after unsuccessful attempts to hoist the platform with a buoy on the tow line. This operation took half a day. The reason for the tragedy is unknown because no fishing line was found entangled in the platform. Weissman recalled Rush making the quip, so a sub is underwater, in response to a question about whether the event put the sub in danger. Why does that matter? Instead of the tried and true spherical shape that better resists pressure, choose a pill-shaped design. The renowned research submersible Alvin, which is owned by the U.S. Navy and run by the Woods Hole Oceanographic Institution, is spherical in shape. Because the pressure is evenly spread throughout the hull, a spherical shape is the best form to withstand crushing forces that can reach three tons per square inch at the bottom of the ocean. The Alvin's limited capacity sub can only carry three passengers to the ocean floor is a drawback. With a comparable design, Rush, who was charging $250,000 each person for his dives to the Titanic ruins, could only accommodate two passengers per trip, providing an Ocean Gate pilot accompanied them. His Titan concept, however, was more spacious, with accommodation for five passengers in a pill-shaped sub that was made of a carbon fiber tube with titanium hemispheres on either end. A former forensic metallurgist named Tim Folk told the Times that the Titan's hull shape change from a compact sphere to a long tube may have contributed to the sub's devastation. He pointed out that a sub's hull has to be thicker and stronger the larger it is in order to bear the same pressure. The larger sub would collapse or buckle sooner in a pair of submarines with the same hull thickness, he said. A carbon fiber hull that is more compression susceptible utilizing carbon fiber, which is less expensive and heavier than titanium, for the majority of the hull of the Titan, was one of Russia's key inventions. On their website, OceanGate mocketed the Titan's carbon fiber and titanium end cap design as being lighter in weight and more efficient to mobilize than other deep diving submersibles. The substance made Titan lighter than Alvin, which weighed 45,000 pounds, at 21,000 pounds. However, according to scientists, carbon composites are significantly more resilient to pulling pressures than they are to crushing forces.
Since compression was the major force the submersible met during its deep water dives, Folk told the Times that he was very surprised by the fibre structure of Titan. According to Jasper Graham Jones, an associate professor of mechanical and marine engineering at the University of Plymouth in the United Kingdom, carbon composites also have a limited lifespan when exposed to severe loads or inadequate design that results in stress concentrations. Yes, composites are quite durable. Indeed, composites have a very long lifespan. However, given that composites malfunction slightly differently than other materials, we do have problems with them, he told the Associated Press. Graham Jones said that the Titan's 5-inch thick hull has endured repetitive strain during the course of around 20 prior dives. Tiny fractures would appear in the framework after each journey. He explained, this might be small and undetectable at first, but would soon become critical and produce rapid and uncontrollable growth. The use of different materials increased the risk of joints dying more quickly because of the Titan's design. A strong adhesive was used to affix the carbon fiber tube to the titanium end caps. Maintaining a seal between them can be difficult, according to experts, because various materials change form under pressure at varying rates. Former president of the Explorers Club of New York City and former Navy submariner Alfred S. McLaren noted that the Titan's hull's various materials have different coefficients of expansion and compression, and that works against maintaining a watertight bond. To put it another way, the seal between the titanium end caps and the carbon fiber tube may have been damaged if the titanium end caps compressed somewhat differently than the carbon fiber tube, especially after several dives. Experts have also questioned OceanGate's decision to forego external Titan testing and certification. According to Graham Jones, it is customary in engineering to enlist outside assistance to guarantee that boats adhere to the strictest industry requirements. OceanGate blasted the third-party certification procedure as time-consuming and innovation-stifling in a 2019 business blog post. The post stated that rapid innovation is anathema to bringing an outside entity up to speed on every innovation before it is put into real-world testing.